In the poem, Robin Klein contrasts the scolding tone of an adult with the dreamy tone of Amanda, who wants freedom from instruction. Through this contrast, Klein explores the contrast between the themes of inordinate amount of parental control and the child's desire for freedom. Here is the summary of the poem Amanda by Robin Klein. The adult speaker, most probably her mother, in a frustrated tone instructs Amanda not to bite her nails or bend her shoulders. Then the adult tells Amanda to sit in the correct posture. Amanda on the other hand dreams of an emerald sea where she can lazily drift like a mermaid. In the sea, no adults are telling her what to do or how to behave. There is nothing but bliss in her dream, bliss at doing nothing. The lines are bracketed to show the reader that Amanda is daydreaming about the adults scolding. The adult speaker returns in the next stanza where she sharply questions Amanda on whether she has finished her homework or cleaned her room or her shoes. While in the first stanza, Amanda was being instructed on how to behave, the second interjection by adult shows her controlling Amanda's day-to-day -day activities. We see the impact of constant scolding on Amanda when she dreams of being an orphan on the street. As an orphan, she would make patterns on the dust covering the street with her bare feet. Here, she dreams of living in silence and freedom where her life is not punctuated with screams of adults telling her what to do. The adult returns in the next stanza by forbidding Amanda to eat chocolate because it will only add more pimples to her face. The adult is also angered by Amanda's daydreaming and tells her sharply to pay attention when the adult is talking to her. Amanda now dreams of being Rapunzel. Rapunzel is a fairy tale character with long golden hair who lived alone in a tower. In the story, Rapunzel threw her hair down from the tower window so a prince could come and climb up her hair, come into the tower and rescue her. Amanda, on the other hand, doesn't need a prince to rescue her. Rather, she wants to escape into the tower and stay alone in the tower for such a solitary life is rare. The poem concludes with sharp words from the adult about Amanda's moodiness which might give the wrong impression to outsiders. The adult, most probably her mother, clearly believes that an ideal child should be happy well-behaved and obedient and hence is trying to mold Amanda into that image. Interestingly, the poem concludes with the adult's lines. This enforces, reinforces Amanda's lack of control over her life. Now, let us look at the literary elements of the poem Amanda. The name Amanda is repeated in the poem to emphasize on the restrictions imposed on Amanda by the adult speaker, most probably her mother. Other repeated words by the adult speaker are don't, stop, did, which further emphasize on the theme of control. An allusion is an indirect reference to a person, place, thing or idea. In the poem, Amanda briefly refers to becoming a mermaid and Rapunzel. A mermaid is a sea creature who is half woman and half fish and lives in the sea. Rapunzel is a character from a fairy tale. Amanda in the poem alludes to these characters to stress on her desire to escape from her parents and live a life of happiness and freedom. The poem contains alliterative words to enhance the rhyme of the poem. In the lines, stop that slouching and sit up straight. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda, are examples of alliteration where the sound of S is repeated at intervals. Don't bite your nail, Amanda. 
Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. There's a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me, a mermaid drifting blissfully. In the poem, the rhyme scheme alternates between stanzas. Now, let us look at the first stanza. The name Amanda is repeated thrice in the stanza. Let us assign the letter A to Amanda and the letter B to straight. So, the rhyme scheme of this stanza would be A, A, B, A. Now, let's look at the second stanza. The words see, me and blissfully rhyme with each other. Let us assign the letter C to these words. So, the rhyme scheme of this stanza would be C, C and C. Now, notice the last stanza of the poem. Amanda's bracketed lines do not follow this. And these lines, the rhyme scheme is different. The rhyme scheme of this stanza would be A, A, B, A. Thank you for watching.